those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. The priests began to teach that hell was a place of eternal torment, ruled by the devil, and it began at the moment of death. The fallen church was able to use this frightful concept of never-ending torture to terrorize and manipulate both the king and the commoner. Most tragic of all, this false teaching portrays Jesus as some sort of sadistic fiend. Another pagan concept that infiltrated Christian thinking was regarding the afterlife. Purgatory is the idea that teaches that at death, some people will enter a temporary hellfire where they're purified for heaven. Purgatory is a halfway house, halfway kind of between heaven and hell. And the thing with purgatory is you can escape from it. The church develops gradually, and again, it grows on the church by slow degrees. The idea that anyone who dies with their works of satisfaction incomplete will probably have to pay them off in some place of post-mortem suffering. They are suffering in order to be purified, purged from their sins and offenses which they've committed in life. Many people misunderstand purgatory and hell. There's an idea you can get out of hell. You can't. If you go to hell, that's it. <laughs> There's no release. You're very, very wicked and you're just doomed. But most people, we have a lot of bad things in us. So how can we be made good for heaven? We have to have it purged out of us, and thus you get the word purgatory. Therefore, most Christians believe that their relatives are suffering in purgatory. And purgatory is not a nice place. The idea of purgatory dates back centuries before Jesus' time. Writings from Plato as early as 400 BC help shed light on where this concept of purification and punishment came from. However, purgatory didn't become regarded as an actual place until centuries later. Between 1160 and 1180 AD, theologians developed the doctrine of purgatory, leading to the formal acceptance of it at the Second Council of Lyon in 1274. The church then offers to support the dead in purgatory by its prayers and by attributing to people the benefits of the sacraments, especially the communion. This is all perfectly orthodox. The church believes that this is doing good, and lay people seem to be willing to put large amounts of money into it. And you have an extraordinary proliferation of institutions founded principally for priests to say masses for the souls of the departed, particularly in the 14th and 15th centuries. This doctrine was fabricated to manipulate the masses for financial gain. People were willing to pay huge amounts of money to release a loved one from the tortures of purgatory. Of course, believers could never really be sure when someone left purgatory. So the money kept flowing into the pockets of corrupt priests. The head of the church would have people going out to raise money and encourage people to give their money to the church, buy people out of purgatory, so they could fund these elaborate buildings. This belief in purgatory is also built on the dangerous concept that the works and the prayers of the living can somehow alter the destiny of the dead. Yet Jesus made it very clear there is no limbo or purgatory. After death, a person's next conscious thought was the resurrection and their eternal reward.